Hello. Whoa, calm down. Why are you so hysterical? Wait, what? No. What do you mean the show starts in two minutes? What day is it? Oh my stars. You mean to tell me I've been sitting here watching Honey Boo Boo Child since our last show ended? No. I just came home, sat down on my couch, and started watching. No, I haven't showered. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. Look, I haven't gotten off my couch in months. Not even to use the restroom. And that scares me, man. I'll have to go to the doctor at some point. But right now, we've got a show to do. You're my producer. Tell me what to do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. You have everything ready. I'll be there. All right. It's time for Morehead Today 2.0. Look out, world. Here comes Nate Mary. Welcome to Moorhead Today. Guest, Coach Sean Woods. Dean of Students, Kevin Kett. And musical guest, Tyler Mullen. Shot on the campus of Moorhead State University, out of Studio A in Breckenridge Hall. Here's your host, Nate Mary. Guys, whew, what a jog that was to get here. But I made it, and I made it on time for the brand new season of Moorhead Today. I'd like to thank all the viewers right off the bat for joining us today. And uh, you know what? We want to get you more involved this year. So the first thing on my agenda is to tell you that if I can get 50 likes on this very show, I will wear the, the beard and the wig that I wore in the intro. And I know it's a little bit silly, but it's going to be a lot of fun. How many people would like to see me up here in this seat wearing that big Grizzly Adams beard, right? Okay, that's what I thought. So let's make it. 50 likes on our Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash MSUTV underscore Moorhead. Go there, like it, see me in the wig. All right, fantastic show today. We have the brand new men's basketball head coach. Coach Sean Woods is on the show today, followed by Mr. Uh, Kevin Kett, the Dean of Students here on campus, he's going to talk about the future of Moorhead State campus. So please stick around. This is going to be a fantastic show. We'll see you when we get back from this commercial break. Moorhead State University has several regional campuses across Kentucky, as well as a huge selection of classes offered on the web through their secure online services. MoorheadState.edu also offers several books to read as well as an online card catalog through its campus library. MSU also provides students with their very own email address. Be sure to check out our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube links for more information. MoorheadState.edu Welcome back to Moorhead today. Uh, really excited about this next guest. He's our new basketball uh, men's basketball head coach here, 
Please welcome Coach Sean Woods. Coach, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So, obviously, we all know uh, where you came from. You played at the University of Kentucky. And uh, you played on an unforgettable team. Is that right? Well, that's what they called us. I don't know if we're unforgettable, but that's the name that they gave us. Right. And... uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you were the guy who uh, made the last bucket uh, with about 2.1 seconds remaining before uh, Christian Leitner. Just in case people don't know around here who, who Sean Woods is. Well, yeah, I did make the shot. Uh, right. I had my eyes closed. An impre- an impressive shot. And uh, <laughs> with my adrenaline flowing, I didn't want to hit the bank, I mean, come off the backboard, but I gave a little more oomph than what I wanted to, and it hit the backboard real clean, and, and you know, fortunate for us, it went in. And then 2.1 seconds later, Leitner hits this shot. What was your feelings, uh, feelings after that? Well, it was the most devastating uh, situation that I've ever endured in, my, I in say, all the years of playing, playing basketball, period. And uh, for a game to have so, much, so many high stakes uh, and, and mean so much, I mean, it, it kept us one game from reaching our goal, and that was to get to the Final Four. That kind of hurt, and it still hurts a little bit. Yeah, I would say you know, as, as a kid uh, growing up watching that game, I, I feel your pain obviously a lot more for you, but it was uh, the shot heard around the world, and, it, uh, man, it just crushed us as well. Um, but we're, uh, we're past University of Kentucky. We're here at Moorhead State, and we're very, very thankful that you've come here, and we know that you have big things in store for us. Uh, what are kind of the things that you've uh, – been been talking about or been discussing with your guys about getting them ready for this season well first of all you know you got to have a vision and uh, you got to have a goal and and I thought Donnie Tindall did a great job um, you know taking a situation where it was when he first got here and where it is now I he he did a a, you know imagine a job and and I just want to penny back off of him now he 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 has the momentum going and I just want to keep it going and take it to another level Right. Well, that sounds great. Uh, Coach, we're going to take a short break. My producer's yelling at me in the studio. Take a quick break and uh, sit right here, and we'll be right back. Woods. Oh, my goodness. How did he get the shot off? There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! All right, welcome back once again. Sitting on the couch is Coach Sean Woods. Coach, uh, so we're, we're looking at keeping the the train moving forward from where Donnie Tennell left off. Mm-hmm. So what kind of uh, recruits did we get in? What are we looking at as far as our, our, our guys? Well, we were fortunate. You know, when you get a job, you know, coaching change, first of all, we were fortunate enough to keep the guys that were here. We lost one. Uh, but other than that, you know, we were able to keep the nucleus here, which is good, um, leading off with, 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 with Drew and then also with Khalil Owens and Angela Warner. Uh, and then you got Devon Atkinson, you know, and then we had a kid sitting out uh, by the name of uh, Bruce Reed. Uh-huh. And then we brought in some great guys. You know, I brought in two guys with me from Mississippi Valley. One was all freshman uh, in uh, Brent Arrington, uh, who gave who scored 33 points against North Carolina at North yeah, Carolina well, as a freshman. Looking forward to him. I'll and then you. he has to sit out this year. And then we got Jason Holmes, who sat out last year, had a, was a medical red shirt because he dislocated his kneecap. And he's getting stronger, and he'll help this year big time, 6'9", um, yes. for center out of Chicago. Uh, and then we were able to sign some, some big-time junior college players and two really good high school players. Uh, so the, the future looks good, and, and uh, we just got to keep working. As soon as it jails, uh, this could be something really, really nice. Yes, you know, I'm very much so excited. This, I've been, I haven't been in this society for Eagle basketball in a long time, and I'm really looking forward to this season. Um, now, what about the, the pre-conference schedule? Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything, anybody we match up with or any games where? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we got size now. You know, we're, we're very athletic. We're, we're, got, you know, we're 6'11", 6'9". You know, we got, you got Chad Pathmas from Canada who's 6'11", about 275. 
Uh, he, he's a high major talent with size. Uh, and we're very, very athletic. And I think Milton Chavis is going to be one of the most improved guys in, in, in the conference, and not only that, maybe in the country with his athleticism because of our style of play. And we pay a lot of attention to player development. That's a big deal that we do. And these guys over the summer, they've been here all summer long working out, and now they're working out again since school has started. And you can see the improvement in every last one of them. So, uh, so you've been working with them? Yeah, ever since school, you know, right. we, summer school, you know, the NCAA allowed us to right. for, be able to work guys out in the summertime. That, that's pretty new, right? Oh, and it was big time for yeah, us because awesome. new job, coaching change, mm -hmm. uh, guys got to get used to the way we, we work. And, uh, you know, they've never been in this type of shape before, you know, and uh, they've never worked this hard before, especially with, with individual improvement. And it's, it's helping out, and they're loving it, you know, the intensity's uh -huh. there. And I have no complaints with what's going awesome. on right that now. That sounds good, Coach. We are very, very uh, – much, very excited. Looking forward to this season. We just cannot wait to see the guys in action. And coach, we're we're thankful that we have you here at Moorhead State. And thank you for being on the show. Hey, thank you. Yes, Glad appreciate to be it. All right. Up next, we're going to uh, hear from uh, Mr. Dean Kett. So please stay tuned. When you got some homework and you need a place to go When you're working on a project and your computer is slow There's a little place on campus that I think that you should know about The first story of the library is what I'm talking about Walk past Java City and then you will see The new commons area is where you should be They got computers and printers, couches, tables and more It's the perfect place to go for study time galore All right, welcome back to Moorhead today. We're ready to introduce our next guest. He's the Dean of Students here at Moorhead State. I'd like to welcome a man of many words, Kevin Kett. Kevin. Hey, Nick, how are you? Doing well. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you oh, for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. Uh, now, what I wanted to talk about, uh, this year at Moorhead State, we've had a, uh, huh, and it has a three branch break. That's the it's quality we have on this show, ladies and gentlemen. It's fall. That's right. It's fall. That's right. It's with the season. So, um, the enrollment was up this year. Was correct. broke broke a record. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Uh, largest uh, incoming freshman it's class of all time. Correct. And and we're still trying to obviously understand the numbers, um, but certainly we're we're over sixteen hundred students, which was our goal wow. uh, as an institution, which is is important. Uh, not only sends a message of. Uh, the hard work of enrollment services, but all faculty and staff, students sending the message that MSU is just a great place to be and a great place to be a student. And, and so we're st starting to see the rewards of working hard and uh, hopefully we'll continue to see classes of this size. But the exact number is still, uh -huh. is still being, uh, being worked on, but uh, sometime in November we'll come, we'll come out with what the official number is and uh, hopefully it'll be just as yeah, strong as it is now. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I think it's going to be the way Absolutely. things have been uh, turning out on campus. Absolutely. Uh, now about campus. Um, can you talk a little bit uh, about the master plan, um, things that's going to go uh, coming on on campus, like the new buildings being built? And, uh, sure. Kind of sound like a villain when I say it, like that, a master plan. You know, but. <laughs> Obviously, every institution has a, has a long-term master plan, and, and Moorhead State University is no different. And, and uh, we've got a great plan in place. Certainly, uh, students have seen with the renovation of residence halls, uh, with Nunn Hall and Alumni right. Tower and uh, Manon Tower and, and East Manon. Certainly, uh, we're very committed to bringing our residence halls up to modern day standards. Uh, right now, West Manon is being uh, renovated uh -huh. and we'll be back online in the fall. Then we have to take a little bit of a break due to some legislative decisions uh, that were made, uh, but uh, we'll obviously get back on track to look at other residence halls and renovate them. So, bringing them up to Wi Fi and new furniture and, uh, you know, again, things that uh, current students right. want to have. So, that's an exciting time. Uh, certainly additions of, of the Space Science Building and the right. SHARE Building have, have shown. But as we look to the future, uh, we'll look at uh, where Waterfield is currently located. Mm -hmm. There will be a, uh, a parking garage put oh, there. Oh, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking forward so to. That's big. We, that, the parking garage, I think, is, is very much needed. And I think the students will enjoy uh, being able to park so close to their, uh, their halls. And that's important. You know, we, yeah. we listen to students, and, and you know, certainly we have enough parking on campus, but certainly convenient parking is, is at a premium. And so we do look at that area around the residential complex uh, being very important. And so Absolutely. looking at a 500 or so car uh, parking garage is important not only for our residence halls, but for the rec center. 
Uh, so we look at, at that piece of the, uh, the equation is important. We'll look at, at some point in time, moving softball and baseball facilities mm -hmm. out uh, to uh, where our golf facility used to be, and, and that's a collaboration with the city. So again, I think that's important uh, to look at that collaboration with the city and show that we're good partners and that they're partners with us. And so looking at upgrading some of our athletic facilities yeah, uh, is also critical. On the master plan for housing is a, a brand new 400-bed apartment complex. No kidding. Um, and so again, appreciating that students uh, don't always want to live in, uh, in traditional wow. housing settings. And uh, so looking to add that 400-bed apartment complex is going to be important. Where, where, where's this building going to be constructed at? If you look at campus, it's, it's somewhat between the rec center and space science. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to go into the, into the mountain just a little bit, but there's an area there uh, kind of where the Martindale house is. There's a right. house back behind there uh, in that general area. Uh, we're looking at building an apartment complex. That'll be good for the students, uh, not only because it's uh, more space and, and places for them to live, that's kind of a beautiful uh, scenery over there. It's an amazing area, and, and again, it, it ties us into this res residential community. All of our residence halls are, are in that area, and so creating kind of that neighborhood yeah, where you exactly. have kind of your academic side of campus, and then you have your neighborhood with the rec center combined. Uh, the plan, for, in my mind, is, is uh, just well thought out, and, and, and I wasn't a part of it, which yeah, I think is, it makes it well thought out, but very well thought out, very uh, very much looking towards the future and what students might want and amenities that they want they might want. Um, so that, that I think is, a, is another important piece uh, for the residence hall community, uh, looking at uh, renovating uh, the university center. Uh, creating kind of a one-stop shop um, is certainly on the master plan as well, awesome. where students could go to one facility and, and talk to housing and talk right. to admissions and the registrar and not have to walk, you know, not that our campus is very, huge, very uh, but not have to walk to right. different buildings and make, it, and make it convenient. Absolutely. Uh, there's been talk of at some point in time making a standalone dining facility, mm -hmm. which again I think is, is very much needed. Alumni Tower is wonderful and certainly we've, we've utilized the space to, a best of our, to the best of our ability, but I think we need a standalone facility where we can you know, not have people cramming in and, and standing in line. And, um, so there are a lot of really good things on yeah, the horizon absolutely. in the, in the that, master plan. That sounds uh, fantastic. Well, moms and dads, please send your students here. You've heard it from uh, Dean Cat right here. This, uh, this campus is being upgraded. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be from home to home for your students. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show today. No really problem. Appreciate I appreciate that. the opportunity. Thanks, All Nick. right. And when we come back, we're going to hear uh, our first, first musical act from uh, Mr. Tyler Mullins, so stay tuned. If you enjoy watching and analyzing movies, the Film Studies Minor would be great for you. The Film Studies Minor recognizes the importance of film literacy in the digital age and offers students the critical skills they will need to productively engage in the mass-mediated world of the 21st century. In class, you may observe movies such as Seven, Blade Runner, Taxi Driver, and Dirty Harry. For further information, contact the Director of Film Studies, Jeffrey Hill, at j.hill at moreheadstate.edu. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Tyler Mullins. <laughs>
thirsty, but I don't have any beaker bucks. Why don't you go down to the Paul store? They'll accept your flex dollars. Oh man, that's a good idea. Hey man, can you grab some chips while you're out? Fine. Food. Drinks. Anything you might need. Come check out the pod store today. Located in the first floor of Alumni Tower. All right, we're back here again at Moorhead today. Uh, let's welcome our next guest. You heard him last semester. You just heard him once again, Mr. Tyler Mones. Tyler, thank you so much for being here again. Good to be here, Nate. Uh, now, last year when I had you on the show, we kind of had you just talk about your musical influences and uh, where you learned to play and that sort of thing. But uh, I failed to ask you about your uh, radio program, which I want you to promote because it is just uh, a wonderful uh, service that you do. You started this as well, right? Yeah, last fall, um, three students, practicum students, also Hazoda, Derek Moore, and myself, we started the WPRC, the um, radio component of the practicum. And uh, we started out just producing three, each producing three, uh, 30, 30 minute shows um, of other people's content off uh -huh. CDs. Um, then last semester, um, I wanted to kind of get more into the production side of it, produce my own music. I'm using the production consoles um, here in right. Breckenridge. So you kind of took the lead, took, took the reins, and yeah, I did went, a little more with it. I went to Tim um, at the end of that fall semester that we uh -huh. started and asked him if I could do something with it, um, you know, the following semester, um, work with the production console. And so I started doing that last semester, um, producing my own music. I had some guests from the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music, um, some musicians there, and myself playing on the songs and then working with the console to mix the songs. Uh -huh. and so all the songs last semester were original? All were original. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Well, they were, they're traditional songs. Right. Um, I didn't write them, or right. a few of them I did, but, mm -hmm. and then they were all original uh, uh, arrangements. Right, okay, yeah. Well, that's great. I'm glad that you uh, have, have brought this up because now, uh, obviously, students who might be interested in doing uh, something like this now can come to WHO as their mentor. <laughs> Well, this semester, uh, another student, Chase Scott, is, um, I'm trying to, uh, we're trying to get this thing growing, so he's kind of come on board, and I'm mentoring him this semester um, to get, um, just we'd like to see this audio component of the, of the practicum to grow. Right. In the past, it's been mainly television, which there's a large interest in that. But there's also an interest in, in oh, audio. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why we have you here today. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to, you know, grow this as well. And uh, Tyler, I appreciate you uh, for being on here and talking about it. And how can, how can people learn more about this? Well, um, if you're interested in the audio part of it, uh, first of all, you can listen to WPRC, which is right. on Channel 77. Absolutely. And uh, this semester, in addition to, to Chase's show, which will be all original content, there's also, uh, let's see, I believe four other students who are produ producing shows, 30-minute um, shows of of songs off CDs and such. Right. But um, come talk to me or Tim Creekmore. You can find us in Breckenridge Hall. Great. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for that information. Yeah. We hope that this uh, program will flourish, and uh, we appreciate you starting that, and we appreciate your music. You do a great job. Oh, well, thanks for having me. All right. Now, when we come back, we're going to hear uh, another song from uh, Tyler Mullins, and then uh, we're going to have a uh, special closing, so stay tuned. Eagle Trace Golf Course is just minutes from Moorhead, Kentucky, right off the Sharky Farmer's exit. Bring your friends and family for a fun and affordable round of golf. The course features a driving range, putting green, and a special discount for MSU students. Call 606-783-9073 to arrange your tee time or group outing. All right, back once again, ladies and gentlemen, the incredible Tyler Mullins. Lips that lie, where well, sweet talk you, they'll break your heart and leave you blue. I heard you 
say Love never will die Oh, don't believe Lives and lie I should know You taught me the score I lost the girl That I adore She fell in love With some other guy Why did I believe lives that lie talk you they'll break your heart and they'll leave you blue I heard you say love never will die oh don't you believe them lips that lie I should know you taught me the score I lost the girl that I adore She fell in love with some other guy Why did I believe he lives that lie? Oh, don't you believe lives that lie? Become a multimedia production major. We provide skills development for using technology to create audio and visual messages for use in all digital media. The program is designed to help students become highly marketable candidates for careers that include radio and television production, digital cinema, narrative and documentary filmmaking, news production, and audio and video production.